Dear fellow delegates, it is a pleasure to once again be attending the Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum and to be speaking to you all today. I would like to begin by thanking our host country, Ecuador, for so warmly welcoming us to their beautiful country and for hosting a fabulous dinner for us all last night. It will definitely be memorable. This forum provides a unique platform to discuss developments in the Asia-Pacific region. It gives us the opportunity to discuss a wide range of topics affecting our countries. This afternoon, I will focus my remarks on the economy and trade. The Asia-Pacific region has become one of the fastest growing and dynamic regions in the world. We have all witnessed this spectacular growth in recent years. However, six years after the global financial crisis, the global economy continues to be fragile, and numerous countries continue to struggle with high unemployment and weak economic growth. Global shocks, such as the recent dramatic drop in oil prices, will have varying effects on our economies, creating both winners and losers. The political turmoil and conflict in Eastern Europe will only add to global instability. We must stand up against aggression and against the illegal occupation of sovereign territories. We must continue to support the territorial integrity of all sovereign nations. We must also stand together and be steadfast in combating terrorism and in condemning terrorist attacks wherever they may occur. We must remind the perpetrators that we will not be deterred or intimidated by them. At this time, our thoughts and prayers are with the people of France and the families of the most recent victims. The major European countries are again on the brink of recession. Economic growth in Asia, albeit still relatively strong, has weakened. Fortunately, the American economy is finally turning around and showing strong job creation and economic growth. Canada's recovery has also been quite strong and reflects the actions our government took before the global crisis, lowering taxes, paying down debt, reducing red tape, and promoting free trade. As Canada works to achieve its goal of returning to balanced budgets this year, we remain focused on the principles of good governance and sound economic and fiscal management. Canada has weathered the economic storm quite well. Real GDP is significantly above pre-recession levels, one of the best performances in the G7. Our debt to GDP is less than half the G7 average. For the sixth year in a row, the World Economic Forum rated Canada's banking system the soundest in the world. All the major credit rating agencies have reaffirmed Canada's AAA rating, and Bloomberg recently rated Canada the second best place in the world in which to do business. But we can't be complacent. We must continue to build on these successes. And that is why Canada's Economic Action Plan continues to focus on five pillars, which I'd like to share with you now. The first pillar is keeping taxes low and creating a strong business climate. Our federal tax burden is now at its lowest level in 50 years. The second pillar is connecting job seekers with available jobs by helping them acquire the necessary skills in the marketplace. The third pillar is opening new markets abroad to enhance trade. The fourth pillar is the responsible development of our natural resources. And finally, the fifth pillar is investing in world-class research, innovation, and technology. Allow me to briefly discuss and address the third pillar in more detail, trade and investment. Our government's trade agenda has already made Canada one of the most open and globally engaged economies in the world. Since 2007, we have reached free trade and investment agreements with 30 countries, which includes an agreement in principle with European Union countries. We also recently concluded our first free trade agreement in Asia with South Korea. In addition, Canada continues to pursue deeper trade ties with the Asia-Pacific region, recognizing that prosperity within APEC economies and globally depends on maintaining a commitment to free and open trade and investment. At the same time, we must all avoid the allure of protectionism, as history has proven its perils. 
We are maximizing opportunities for our entrepreneurs through innovative trade, investment, air and science and technology agreements. For example, we recently established a new renminbi trading hub in Canada to allow exporters and importers to settle trades directly between Canadian dollars and the Chinese RMB. We are attracting regional investment to Canada by ensuring a speedier transport of goods through a much strengthened Asia Pacific gateway, increasing capacity by building and upgrading railroads, highways, bridges and port facilities is essential to ensuring the free flow of goods. We are also expanding internet broadband service to the north and to other remote areas. As Canada continues to expand its markets and commercial relations with the Asia Pacific region, we remain committed to working with our Asia Pacific partners to build trade and investment ties that will deliver mutual benefits. Opportunities such as this forum will only increase the cooperation that will make that happen. I'd like to wish everyone a successful parliamentary Asia Pacific Parliamentary Forum and I would like to welcome everyone to come to Vancouver, Canada next January for the 24th APPF. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Gracias. Tiene la palabra Chile.